business account for SMEs. Being a business owner is a role that changes constantly. At JMMB Bank, we offer a new type of partnership. We understand and care about the unique needs that come with operating a small or medium-sized business by offering flexibility, partnership, and expert advice to support your successful growth. For you, we've created the JMMB Smart Business Account. The JMMB Smart Business Account is an interest-bearing checking account for registered businesses with an annual revenue of under $450 million, or U.S. dollar equivalent, which gives you the opportunity to maximize the value of every dollar earned. The benefits? No nuisance fees. Never have to deal with monthly service fees, account dormancy fees, and minimum monthly balance requirements. Easy payments. Enjoy free bill payment and free inter and intra-bank automated clearinghouse ACH transfers within Jamaica. Interest accumulation. Earn interest and grow your company's money over time. Interest is calculated daily and paid monthly. One free manager's check per month. Check leaves available upon request or ask about our special pay-as-you-go check feature. Speak to a JMMB bank representative today to see how the JMMB Smart Business Account, along with our Small Business Loan Solutions and SME Resource Center, can support you in growing your business. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at JMMB Group, or visit our website, jm.jmmb.com. JMMB SME Resource Center. A partnership that goes above and beyond. Because you need more than just a bank, we are committed to offering support and guidance to small and medium-sized businesses or SMEs every step of the way. The JMMB SME Resource Center ensures that you are prepared to access JMMB's banking, investment, and insurance brokerage services, along with our business planning expertise. The center provides customized advice to take your business to the next level. The JMMB SME Resource Center will help you to identify financial opportunities, develop a professional business plan, structure financial statements, and solve business challenges with the help of our network of business partners. Are you ready to grow your SME with JMMB? Speak to one of our JMMB SME representatives to find out how we can partner with you. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at JMMB Group or visit our website at jm.jmmb.com. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the JMMB SME Resort Center monthly workshop. So this month, we're going to be focusing on creating a strategic plan. So I hope everyone has already identified their 2023 strategic goal. I'm Tanise, and I'm going to be your host for tonight. I'm also one of GMMB's SME Resource Center officer. On behalf of my team, I want to say thank you so much for choosing to spend the rest of the evening with us. And on behalf of tonight's presenter, I also want to say that I promise we're going to be having an enjoyable and an educational night. We're going to be starting off with a word of prayer from our senior SME Resource Center officer, Mr. Vincent Orr. Vincent, can you please go ahead and lead us in prayer? Okay, thank you, Tanis. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for taking us safely through today. We thank you for the opportunity 
to meet on this forum. And we pray that tonight's session will serve to inspire, guide, and motivate us to achieve success in our business. Lord, help us to remain focused and be mindful of the plans we set and help us to dedicate our efforts towards achieving them. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Vincent. Before we begin, I would also like to share a specially selected section of a very important document at JMB. It's our Vision of Love document, and it speaks about JMB's core value and what we really want to represent as an organization. My coworker Natalia, who is from our Trinidad and Tobago office, will be sharing a section that we have selected specifically for you tonight. Natalia, please go ahead. All right, thanks, Denise. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I'll read. Love motivates the JMMB team to serve our clients who are a very special part of our family. The driving force of the organization is to provide opportunities for team players to expand their potential to recognize the power within and their ability to fully express and manifest this power to the benefit of the individual, the organization, and the society. In the process, all individual and organizational goals are achieved. Thank you so much, Natalia. So if you found that section to be any motivation to you, and you want to read the entire document, it is on our website. You can go ahead and visit our website and read at your leisure. Before we begin the main discussion that we're here for, I'd like to take a few moments just to introduce the Resource Center for those persons who are already familiar with it, just to reintroduce the solutions that we offer. The SME Resource Center is here to help our small and medium-sized business owners grow their business. This means helping you to identify the right solution to achieve your goal. And we want to ensure that we fully understand you and your business. And so we offer a free needs discovery consultation. We support you in areas such as providing financing, insurance, investment, and your pension solution. The resource center members also have the opportunity to utilize services of our partners. And we have partners in areas such as marketing, business development, HR, accounting, among other areas. Our clients are also provided with business information through our monthly workshops, such as the one that we are at tonight, as well as we issue a quarterly newsletter. The resource center also firmly believes in the power of networking. And so we provide our members with networking solutions via our WhatsApp group, as well as our SME directory. Via these channels, you have the opportunity to connect with potential business partners as well as customers. So if you're not an existing German SME resource center and you want to access the solutions, or even if you are an existing, but you'd like to have a free new discovery, or you want to start to see with an era of your business, please feel free to send us an email at smuresourcecenter at gmmb.com. So that is it about the resource center. For tonight, we are going to be discussing how to create a right strategic plan. And to lead us into that discussion, we have with us Mrs. Michelle O'Connor. Tonight's session is not a webinar, it's a workshop. And so we want to hear from you. So we do encourage you to ask all the questions you want we would love if you would either indicate your questions or your comments either in our chat window or feel free to use the raise hand button and we'll let you know when you can go ahead and ask your question or make your comment. But we definitely want to hear from you. Take advantage of our expert that we have with us tonight. So Michelle is the founder of Strategy with Michelle. She is a business growth coach and consultant. She has over seven years of strategic planning experience and a certification in strategic planning and execution principles. Michelle corporate experience has seen her working in areas such as Jamaica, Dominican Republic, as well as Trinidad and Tobago. Through her work with business owners, she helps overcome challenges in achieving strategic plans by providing various development training tools she also helps teams to design effective execution and accountability frameworks 
designed to help the organization reach its goal, as well as other coaching initiatives. So tonight, she'll be using this knowledge to help you prepare for your 2023 goal. With that said, I'm going to ask Michelle to take the floor and lead you through tonight's discussion. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much, Tanis and team. Thank you for having me and for trusting me with your SMEs this evening. Um, as Tani would have shared, it's going to be a workshop. We're going to be doing the work while we're here. It's not just a presentation. And my aim this evening is that you would have an opportunity to pull together all the different um, ideas that you have, all the different workshops that you've been to, your marketing plan, your sales plan, in a way that you are able to share with whether another business partner, share with a bank, share with an investor, you name it. So because we're going to be doing a workshop, I have two other goodies for you. Um, so I'm going to be dropping a link in the chat and I want you to use that link to enter your details and you will be taken to the documents that we're going to be using. Now, as I often say to persons, 50 of us are on, maybe a few of us are working as admin. However, you have taken the time out to be here this evening. So I would hope that you keep focus. One of the ways I ensure that I keep focus and I go on live workshops or anything that's happening on Zoom is that I turn my camera on. I don't know if it, it, this, it can be managed, but that way I am sure that I am focused and I am sure that I am being deliberate and intentional about doing the work while we're here because it's your time and your time is valuable. And as such, you know, we have one hour. So we're going to pause the WhatsApp messages for a while. We're going to pause the social media for a while, <laughs> right, guys? Put a thumbs up in the chat if you are with me. And we're just going to be focused in getting things done for our business. So um, the link is in the chat. Go ahead and let me know. Thank you, Kim. That can be. Go ahead and let me know once you're able to enter your information and you've been able to access the documents. No, I'm going to project on screen the document that I want you to focus on. You have three documents. You're going to open the one that says business um, growth planning guide. So I'm going to project that on screen so you know which one you are to open right now. I will let you know how we will utilize the others. Now, I'm giving you the others for free <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a gift because it is a tool that you can use at any point in time. One is a vision creation tool. So this is the one that I want you to open open for this workshop this evening the other two you can use at another time one is a vision creation tool and what you'll be able to do with that document is design your vision so we talk about creating vision boards you name it at the end of the year by december november you don't have to worry about it you just go back to that document and go through an outline vision for your life the other document is get organized no, I created that one because I, what I was getting from a lot of entrepreneurs is that they had a lot of ideas in their head and they didn't know what to do with it. So this document just walks you through how it is you can do a brain dump and then from there, organize your ideas and your thoughts so that you can take action. But for tonight, you can use those at another time, but for tonight, please open this one, Business Growth Planning Guide. And let me know, I'm looking in the chat, I want to make sure that... Um, Okay, I'm seeing open, open, okay, okay, okay. Or you can put a thumbs up, anyone works. The team can look and see if um, persons are have opened it. Yes, I'm seeing where you have indicated that they have opened. There's a link, we can place the link again, seeing that persons are, are, are coming in and persons are talking. We'll drop the link again. Just go ahead and enter your information and open the chat, open the document. This document is the one that we're working in. And we'll continue to place the link. We'll continue to place the link as persons join, just in case there are others who have not joined as yet. So while persons are opening the document, if you could just drop in the chat, um, what type of business do you have? Give me an idea of the businesses that you have. Go ahead and drop that in the chat while others open a document. I want to ensure that everybody has it as we 
as we start. I know sometimes we hear about strategic plan and it sounds like you know, something quite highfalutin and complicated. We don't know what it is. So have you ever completed a, a strategic plan? Do you currently have a strategic plan? The, the poll is up, go ahead and select yes or no. So we know. Um, okay, we have a lot of service, service industries. Okay, fragrance, car dealership, good stuff. These Okay, okay, we have a good, we have a good mixture of, 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 of persons who are here. Wellness, all right, thank you guys so much. And I hope everybody is now, have, have now had an opportunity to open the documents. We have persons in law. All right, so we have a, a lot of service providers. So go ahead and answer the question so we can get an idea if you have a strategic plan. This will just give us an indication how in depth um, we need to go this evening. All right, so as I shared, sometimes we think about strategic plans and it just seems like a bit highfalutin. And we'll continue. Yes, I see somebody asking for the link. We'll share the link again and we'll continue sharing it throughout the night. Now, um, a lot of persons, you know, think about this as something that is complicated. So my job this evening is to walk you through how it is you can pull all the documents that you have together in one location so you can share it with various persons that, as I would have shared. So we're going to go to, of course, you know, you have introduction and all of that. We're going to go to our planning. Now, the first thing, we can go to the next few slides about be clear on your vision. Now, when you think about going into business, I know for a lot of us, what happens or what we get caught into is, you know, this is a business idea that I have. I'm going to jump and start working. What ends up happening when we do that, whenever we hit hurdles, or as I would have, as I shared with some persons, whenever we are finished selling to our friends and our family, we don't know what else we're going to do. Or for some of us, when COVID hit, we're not sure where it is that we are going to play. Do I still have a space? You know, what am I going to do? When you have a vision and you're clear about your vision, you can always pivot. You're always able to rally back and say, you know, decide on what steps am I going to take next? How am I going to move forward through this struggling time? So be clear on your vision. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I want you to be able to do that on your own. I'll tell you where we're going to be doing the work tonight. Another thing I want to be clear on, we have um, 60 persons, <laughs> over six, 62 persons who are on. We're going to be taking questions, but bear with us if we have to pause the questions to move on, because we want to be able to go through the document so you understand what is in it and you know how to use it going forward. Now have a vision for your company. It's not by chance that you go into a company and you see their vision on their wall. It's there for a reason. It's there because it's a reminder about what it is that they're about. Why do they exist? So you need to be able to talk about why you exist. Why am I here? What am I here to offer? What is the aspiration behind me wanting to do seasoning? Why do I want to offer law? Why do I want to provide law services to persons? You know, we have persons who are, have supermarkets, car dealerships, you name it. Think about why. Why am I doing this? Because no matter what type of business you are in, there is going to be there's there's going to come a time when you have to tap into your why. It's the same thing for your life. Like why are you here? And I know some of you who are on would have figured that out, which is the reason you have a business in the first place, right? Because you know that there is a greater calling for you, and there is more that you want to offer. So in your own time, I want you to document your vision. The next thing that you should have in your strategic plan is your mission. Now, sometimes we skip over these aspects of the planning and we jump into the action because the action is where the niceness is and you get to show up on social media, you get to serve people. But it's almost like having a foundation. If you don't have a solid foundation up the top, when it gets shaky, it's just going to blow off. So be clear on what your vision is. 
for your business? Like, what is the goal? Why am I here? And I have some triggering questions in the document. We can go to the next slide. Um, <clears throat> your vision statement. What do you do? Why do you do it? Um, what's your reason for doing it? We can continue to the next, um, next one. Right. So we want to talk about what, 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 why am I doing it? And the document is right, so guys, you can go ahead and you can type in the, in the, the spots that are there. So in your own time, I want you to go ahead and update this. Now, I have an activity that I do with my clients, and I want to be able to do it with you. I ask my clients to create a vision, a, a, a vision for their business. So think about your business five years from now. And you were, you have been asked to be, you are, you have been selected to be featured on Forbes magazine cover. I'm going to project a cover. I mean, I have a few for my clients, but I didn't get permission from them to share. And as such, I'm just going to share what Forbes magazine cover looks like. Although I'm sure majority of us know what it looks like. Think about, think about your Forbes magazine cover. What would you want it to say about you and your accomplishments? Now, when you think about it like that, you start thinking about all the juicy stuff. So you want to make it interesting and you want to make it enlightening. This now talks, it, it gives you a picture of what is possible for your business. And um, it, it, it sounds like, oh, why do I need to do that? Or why should I do it? But when you create this vision for your business um, and for yourself, that is bigger than what you can see right now. It gives you hope. It's like having a vision board. My desk is <laughs> to my right. And my vision board is right in front of me because every single day when I sit down, I want to be reminded of why I'm doing what I'm doing in the first place. And so, you know, this magazine, um, I circled the area that's outlined the new face of coding. If we can go to the next one, it we have. Um, next slide. All right, it's coming back up. But I just want you to get an idea as to what it is I want you to, what I'm encouraging. You don't have to do it, but just a way in which you can design a pictorial of what your business will look like. So the Honest Company is $200 million founder, and we know her. She's, uh, she also moonlights in Hollywood. So you get to put whatever you want to put on it. So I've had clients that put 30 under 30. How this young Black female created a multi-billion dollar business from her bedroom you know, different things. I want you to think creatively. And when you create this, I have persons who create this and they just frame it and put it in their office because that is where you're going. And when you can picture something, you wake up every day and you're focused on it. So the next one is one of the Kardashians. And um, I think she was featured as uh, the millionaire, 20, 30 under 30 or something like that. So I'm encouraging you to go ahead and utilize that. Um, we're bringing up, the last one. At 21, she's set to be the youngest ever self-made billionaire. Welcome to the era of extreme fame leverage. That's missing an E, but um, it's just giving an idea about what you can put on the cover of your magazine. You can make it your own. It is something that's aspirational. You're thinking about your business and you're thinking about what is possible. This week I saw a video of, of Oprah when she was just, we can, we can go back to the presentation, when she was just launching her talk show. And one of the things she said was she was being interviewed and she was asked, oh, you know, I hear you've, you've started, started this little talk show. And she's like, yeah, I've started a, a talk show. So the person was like, what if it doesn't work? And she said, well, what if it doesn't work? I'll still be good. But I'm still going to try, but I'm sure Oprah would have had an idea about what she wanted her business to look like, and here she is today. So take, take some time and go through designing your vision and creating it in a, you know, documenting it in a very creative and fun way, so it's not depressing and feel like work, all right? So let's get to how I want you now to complete the rest of the document. Now, a lot of you would have um, identified what you offer. So if we go to the next page, you should be on that page 10. 
And if you're not, we have one hour, so we won't be able to go through the entire thing. So Tanisha, you let me know if there are any questions. Um, be clear on what you offer. Like be clear on, you know, why is it that persons are coming to you? What is the solution that you're providing to persons? One of um, some of that I do some work with, she put it nicely. She said, think about yourself five years ago, what it is that you would have needed. So maybe you're in seasoning, you're providing seasoning because the ones that you grew up using, they have a lot of ingredients that are not, um, I don't want to say healthy, <laughs> but they, they, you, you may have an allergic reaction to it. Think about like beauty products, persons have designed and created beauty products because they have a, a certain type of skin type and as such, they wanted something different and it wasn't available on the market. So think about what it is that you offer, be clear on it and write it in a way that persons can understand it. I know sometimes because we're all brilliant and we're creative, we want to find words that you know are very attractive, but be clear on what you offer and document that. So if you speak to a potential customer or if you share your strategic plan with them, they can say, oh, this is what, this is the business that the person is in. The next thing that you want to do is you want to know who you are serving. Now, we, there are lots of words that are used to define how we document this. Some persons say avatar. We say your ideal customer. But who are you serving? And be specific. If you're serving females, you're serving females. If you're serving persons between a certain age group, you're serving persons between a certain age group. I interacted with a young lady yesterday, and she is a Muslim and she is a, she, her goal is to, to serve other black Muslims who are overweight by 20 pounds. Like she's that specific. No, when you give the clients that you're serving a very clear picture of who you are, you're, you're quicker to have them gravitate to you because I can easily understand that, okay, I am Muslim. I am overweight by about 30 pounds. This person is for me. I don't have to try and wonder you know, I wonder if I should go to her. I wonder if I shouldn't go to her. I want, you, you want to limit the time because persons are busy and all over the place these days, have a lot of responsibilities. So you want to limit the time that you're giving persons to think. So be very clear about who you serve because in being clear on this, what it does, it helps you with your communication plan as well. Because you know that you are targeting Muslims. You are thinking about, right, what are Muslims doing right now? Um, would this be something that, that they are interested in? Persons who are overweight, like myself, what are some of the struggles that they're having? When you are very clear about who you are serving, you're also clear in your messaging and how it is that you target them. So this, that's how you would utilize this section, ensure that you know who you are serving. Any questions so far? Okay, no, I see Tani said no. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, I hope persons are listening and documenting. All right, no, all right, thank you very much. All right, so the next thing that you want to do, if you haven't done it as yet, I want you to do a SWOT assessment. Don't think of it as anything that is highfalutin or you have to get real fancy with it. We need to understand what's happening inside of our business. When you're able to understand what's inside of your business, you're better able to address it. Now, what are you strong at? And you're just, just going to be writing down, I'm keeping it on this page, but I want you to go to the next page and start jotting down, what are some of the things that are your strengths? Like, and ask people, you know, do that. Sometimes we don't have to figure things out on our own. You have clients that you've served, you've had, you have person that you offered services to, even if it's for free, um, you have family members, ask them, what am I good at? When you think about this business, what is it that this business is good at? And write those things down. Use the words and the language that persons give you because that's the other thing that we do. Persons tell us one way and we fix it up in our own language. Use the words because guess what? If they're using those words and those persons are your target audience, when you're communicating with them, you want to communicate with them using the same words because that is how you're going to get them to come on board, right? Write down what your weaknesses are, any opportunity, opportunities that are out there for you, whether it is to market your products overseas, whether it is to target persons in another parish, whether it is to target another age group, another gender, you name it. And what it is that is threatening your business. Write it down, guys. I'm hearing a sound, so I guess somebody has unmuted. 
All right, so if you could just drop in the chat um, for your for the business that you have, just so that I can see, what would you say? Just write your business name and what your strength. Just give me one strength, if possible. So think about the business that you have, and I want you to go ahead and just write, you know, what is my strength? And I hope for those who joined after, you know that we're working with our documents and we've dropped a link in the chat for you to use. Okay, Reliable Custom Services Limited. We're known for being very efficient and saving clients lots of money. That's very clear. <laughs> and that is something that people want to hear. Once you're saving me money, I'm going to want to do business with you. All right, quality persons want to know that when they get stuff, you know. <laughs> All right, let me leave that example for another time. Um, 20 years experience. Yeah, so you have expertise and you are knowledgeable. Vegetarian friendly season and seasoning and condiments, right? Save clients time. So that is how specific I want you to get when you're writing things down because those things that you are good at, um, say, let me give you another example. But I don't like to go places that I can't find parking. And I also don't like to go to places where when I park and open the door, I can't come out of the vehicle. <laughs> so you find that if there's something that you have, even as simple as that, or you might think that it's, a, it's something that everybody's supposed to know, even if it, has, if it is as simple as that, note it. Because you best believe there's somebody out there who values the strength that you have. You know what? I am starting a business and I'm going to need um, technological security. I don't want somebody who is just learning on Google. I want somebody who has been in this business for a while and this person is going to be able to support me. So I'm going to go to Kenton Roberts. Every time I use these seasoning, for some reason, I'm having flare ups. It's not working with my diet or you have an autoimmune condition. I want some seasoning that is going to be good for me let me try out my chords hope i'm pronouncing it right so that is how i want you to think about the strengths that you have because you are able to use your strengths to draw your clients closer to you once you're able to note them so that's how i want you to utilize that section of the document um to outline your swaps and then when you look at the weaknesses um think also about if you have a strength, I want you to think of how can I use my, my, my strength to work on my weaknesses, you know? So therefore, if, if, for example, I am not able to, if I'm not able to, let me see, if I may not have the technology that I need to reach my clients, but I'm good with engagement, okay, what can I do? Maybe I don't have the technology myself, but the web, the web, the, in, the internet is there. Social media is there. Let me go on social media and talk to the people that I want to draw close to me. So when you write it on, you're able to see what do I need to work on and what I can continue doing. And this helps you as well, guys, entrepreneurs, CEOs, because so often we want to do what everybody else is doing or what we see others doing, but it's not a strength of ours. So encouraging you to do this part and use it based on what is strong for you. I was giving a friend of mine an example today where, and I encourage you guys as CEOs to do um, psychometric evaluation as well. So you understand how you lead and understand your leadership styles. I did my strength find and one of my strength find was collaboration. And I was saying to her, if I post something on social media, um, the post, if I do a video, I get way more engagement than if I do a written, a, a post in text. And that is also true. Even if I, I, I repost something from, say, a Denzel Washington or somebody who is famous, because it's the things that you are strong at, your customers and your audience and your tribe gravitate to you for that. But sometimes we shift and start doing what other persons are doing. And that sometimes can cause us to lose the persons that we're, we're collaborating with. Everybody is with me so far? Michelle, sorry to cut you. We actually have a question in the chat. Sure, um, sure, sure. Know? She's asking, is it 
and I guess this is for the SWOT assessment, is it the weakness of the company or the business owner? The weakness of the company. Mm -hmm. Which, based on the size of your business, it could also um, be your weakness as well. So if it is that you are a, a company, maybe say, for example, you have um, five employees, four employees, you name it, and there's a, a weakness about not serving customers on time, not serving your clients on time. It could be that you as a business owner need to work on something so you can show up on time for your customers. So it depends on the size of your company. So if you as a business owner, you're directly delivering a service to your customers, and you are you are impacting that because of a weakness that you have you would need to also notice um i can give you an example and i see somebody say that it changed foreigners that just changed dentists because of that parking is difficult yes we do um i had a client I, I was talking to somebody and one of the things well i did we did this exercise and what we saw in it was from the team was that they there was the weakness was that they don't serve clients on time, which is why I use that example because that jumped out at me. And it just so happened that the per the CEO who was supposed to be on time was late. So we had to now figure out, okay, why is the CEO late? And then we had to drill down, drill down, drill down. So if it's if you are the director delivering a service, then you have an opportunity to write that down so you can address it, so you can grow the business. All right. So that's the first part of your internal assessment. The next, the next part is we want to know who is playing in the space that we are in. So who are your competitors? You don't have to know everybody, but I'm sure as business owners, there are some people who are like, all right, you know what? I need to understand what they're doing. They're playing in the same space that I'm playing in. So I had a meeting today with a, uh, I would see as a competitor. And your competition doesn't mean that you're rivals, right? So both of us offer strategic planning services. However, one of the things that we realized was I am more on the technical side of it and she's more on the people leadership and assessment and understanding the why behind how leaders think so they can grow their business. So we're like, okay, we may be offering the same thing, competing in the same space, but there's an opportunity for us to collaborate. So when you know who your competitors are, you are then able to say, what are they delivering that's different from me? Or what am I delivering that's different from what they're doing? So therefore we are not compete, or even if they're doing something different, or you know what? It looks like we're doing the same thing, but I bring something different to the table. What is that thing that is different? I want you to find what that thing is and I want you to write it down. That goes down the bottom. So at the top, you're going to be talking about who your competitors are, make a list of them what do they offer make a list of the things that they offer what is unique about them make a list of the things that are unique about them because you need to know because sometimes you may not be growing and you're wondering to yourself what is really causing this stagnant growth why am i still here you really don't understand the environment that you're operating in you don't understand you know maybe, maybe this company has been around for 10 years more than you or um, they have more experience. So therefore, at the end of the day, people may want to go to them. So if I'm going in the space, what do I need to do differently? So I want you to note who your competitors are. And then at the bottom now, you're going to state, based on what you know, what are you offering differently? Because if you think about it, remember when I started earlier, I said your strategic plan is a document that you can use for your investors, for new employees that you're onboarding you need a bank loan you name it when you're able to show that you've completely thought through this business that you're in and it's not just a hobby it's not just something that you thought of yesterday and you're going to jump and do it when you're able to do that you know are able to communicate clearly and you're confident in what you're doing you never just wake up or you don't just wake up today and say oh you know what i'm gonna sell seasoning in saint thomas or i'm going to offer human resource services in this parish you are clear about what you're doing in the spaces that you're playing in. All right, everybody's good so far. No questions in the chat, so. 
All right, so this person says, I train my staff to offer professionalism, not hustle. We are transitioning clients to believe real estate is a profession slash career and not a hustle or side job for extra money. Because, right, I know quite a few persons and that is how they view it. Um, funny enough, I was in Puerto Rico in January and I met, a, I met someone who is in real estate and she approaches it from the standpoint of creating generational wealth. So it's not, I'm helping you just to buy this house or somebody wants somewhere to rent so I can get a commission and move on. But when I think, when she thinks about taking a client to a particular area to purchase a property, she's, think, she's coming from the standpoint of I'm helping this person to generate generational wealth. And so um, you get to, to create different ways in which you want to do that. So ensure that you have your assessment done of who your competitors are. So if you go to make a pitch and they say to you, why do you believe you can win in this area? Why do you believe that this can work for you? You can easily say, well, you know what, I've assessed my environment. And these are the persons who play in the space. And while we may offer the same products or solutions, I believe that I have a unique da 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 da. You would have listed it here. All right. Now for the next for the next um, page, if you've been in business for a while, you want to also look at how you have performed. You want to look at what are some of the things that have worked for you. What are some of the things that have not worked? You also want to look at the <clears throat> sorry the results that you've been able to generate over time. No, it's a, I say it's a person all the time. It's a no judgment activity because there are times when we believe that because we've not generated the results that we aim to generate, we never meet the revenue target, we never meet the profit target that, oh my God, the world is ending. Give yourself grace. I did a live shortly before I came on here because as I was preparing, that is something that came to me. Give yourself grace. I mean, I don't know how long you've been in business. Maybe you can drop it in the chat so I can see how long you guys have been in business with those who are on. Um, you get to look back at your results. You get to assess your results. You get to see whether or not, you know, is this really what I want to do? Person say in one year, continue dropping it in the chat. A decade, okay. Anybody else want to share? <coughs> 18 years, three years, okay. So persons have been in business for a while. So this part will be applicable to you and I do hope that you have been using it. Nine, 11, 19, one and a half, that's good. Seven years, all right. So everybody, well, those who have responded so far, this section is going to be very important for you. And it is blank because you can do your calculations in Excel and just drop it and paste it in the document. So ensure that you're doing your review. You're looking at what, what are some of the things that you've been able to achieve and don't downplay your achievements. One of my quotes said to us that we were supposed to look at our intellectual property. And sometimes we feel we don't have anything, but the things that you've been able to create, the persons that you've been able to help, the lives that you've been able to impact, like that's a part of what you own. Whether it is that I was able to, when I created this document just for this session, you name it, whether you worked somewhere and you were able to create things and design ideas and create plans and strategies, you name it. Those are things that are achievements for you. But sometimes we don't look at it that way. You know, we think that, oh, it's just something that I did. And you move on with life. But state what your achievements are, including your achievements, some of the feedback that you've gotten from your customers, some of the things that they have said. And in that, I would say, ensure that you're getting feedback all the time, whether it's solicited or unsolicited, because you want to know that the persons who you are called to serve, and I keep using the word serve because we need, we get to remember that we are serving people, not just in this thing. We want to make money. But once you love the people that you serve and you're able to offer them something that impacts their life, then they'll continue to pay you, right? Um, on the last section where it has, what are some of the challenges you face? I want you to also ask yourself, why didn't it work? You know, what, what about it didn't work? And if you can't figure it out, 
you should have person that you can call and talk to. You can ask them, you know, share the idea with them, let them know what your plan was. You know, I embarked on this activity. This is what I wanted to achieve. It never really worked. What do you think? So find out why it didn't work because you don't want to repeat the same thing again. So that is how you would do that section. Now, after you've done your assessment and you've done your review, you are now going to talk about how it is you are going to be growing for next for the year. So 2023 is upon us and you want to grow for 2023. Now, the first thing you want to do is identify what your goal is. Some persons are quick to say, you know what? I want to generate, and I have an example here, $300,000 in revenue or profit. You get to name whichever one you want to put down here based on how long you've been in business. That's the person said they've been in business for one and a half years. I know if you've been in business for that time, you may not have a full knowledge or you probably haven't like leveled out how much, what your profit is because you're, you're working things through, but write down what your goal is. You need to have a goal. Like you need to be able to say, this year, I want to generate $300,000 for the year. So if you have it, write it on. If you don't have it, you can work it through. You know what? I have um, 10 clients or I have 100 clients. I sell my season at an average of $500. Mm, can I make it? You know, and it doesn't have to stick. As you work through, you can change it as you go along. So in the document, go ahead and I want you to state what your goal is for the year and just dream for a minute. <laughs> what if it is possible? Sometimes when we see the goal big, we tend to believe that it's unattainable. But when we break it down into smaller pieces, we understand that, you know what, this thing really possible. Or maybe I can do more. But we're going to go through that shortly. I'm watching the time as well. So ensure that you have your, your financial goals stated. On the next page, we're going to talk about how it is that you're going to be achieving that target. Um, and I have an example here, which is that of a makeup artist. I don't know if there's any makeup artist on, but if you are, I have started your strategic plan for you. <laughs> All right. So. If you say, for example, you're a makeup artist and you want to generate 300,000 for the year, this is how you're going to use this template. And there's a blank one on the next page, but we're just, I'm just going to walk through with you how it is that you're going to be utilizing it. These are the four areas that you could think of offering. You're going to be doing makeup classes, you're going to be offering wedding and graduation packages, you're going to be doing makeup consultation, and you're going to be selling beauty products. When you break down your goals like that, and this is an example, you're able to see, all right, how much revenue am I generating from each one? Classes, I'm doing 100,000. Wedding package is 50. Consultation, 100, et cetera, et cetera. Who am I targeting? You write down, I clearly, who are the person that I'm targeting for this particular service? And what are the actions that are needed? Be very, very specific. What am I going to be doing to target these persons that I'm serving? And what is the timeline? By when? I need to complete um, the wedding and graduation packages and start talking to people about it. By May, because after that is graduation season and July to so whenever, June to August is peak wedding time. So those are some of the things that you get to think about. So on the next few pages, I have some blank um tables for you to update so i want you to use it to enter what your annual targets are and then after that you're able to enter it per quarter take some time guys and do this for your business some person may have had it already if you did that is awesome if you did already you, you also have an opportunity to review and to make some changes so that is how you're going to be utilizing the next few pages so there's one for the year we, we can skip to that one there's one for the year and then i have one per quarter we're now in march approaching march but you can you can always update what you had for january and february so when you're doing your review because your review is something that you can do every quarter you can do it every month so that was the review that we had on 
one of the earlier pages. I have year in review. You can <laughs> print it and strike out the year and put quarterly review, but ensure that you're constantly going over. If you don't have a management team, if you don't have a board, there are some of us, we have a group of entrepreneurs who we come together at a certain time every quarter and we are talking about what goals we have for our business and how it is that we want to improve. You're sharing your challenges. Boy, I set the $100,000 target for quarter one and we're now in March and I don't even make it to $1,000 as yet. You can talk to somebody who have expertise who can help you. And of course, the resource center is providing these opportunities for you to come on and be served. So use the next few pages to break down specifically what it is that you want to do. <laughs> Kenton, what it is, if, it's, if it's possible to be a part of that entrepreneur group, it's almost like a board. So, you know, we'd have to talk to them and see what are the criteria for having persons um, join. But I'll, I'll note that that is something that we can talk about at our next meeting. So use the, the quarterly sheets for that. And then we'll go to what support you need. This is another area that we sometimes skip and it gets us. Okay, we'll reshare the link. If we can drop back the link some. Okay, it's okay. Natalia is going to share it. Thanks. Um, and then for those who joined after, there are three documents in the, in the folder. You're using the one that says business growth planning guide. The others are just some tokens for you guys. What support will you need? This is another area that we, we, we tend to forget and leave out. And this also gets us into overwhelm. No, if I am taking, I'm using the example, continuing with the person is offering um, the makeup artist, yeah, offering makeup classes, and the targeted revenue is $100,000. They are targeting aspiring makeup artists. Actions needed, and I just, I just noted one, promote on social media or create a monthly special um, plan. Some of the things that you're going to need, because if you're going to be offering classes, it means that you need to reach out to a person. Ask yourself, how am I going to reach out to them? I need a customer relationship management system. I need admin support for registration. If online, am I using Zoom? Am I going to be doing it on YouTube? Am I going to be doing it on Facebook? What am I going to be saying to people? And who am I going to be partnering with? Because sometimes we think that we have to do it on our own and we don't. We get to get support from others so you can think of who you're going to be partnering with and uh, the knowledge that you yourself need. Because as you see, things and times are changing. If you're in this industry of makeup, you see that <laughs> some of the ones that we, we saw that were scattered all over TV for advertisement, nobody's wearing those anymore. So a new ones are coming in and your customers are watching the influencers that are online and they'll be like, oh, you know what? I want what that person is wearing. You now need to be knowledgeable so that you can, so that you can serve them. So for those who are, let me just go back through so I can see some of the businesses that are here. And I guess it depends on the goals that you have. So for the, 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 um, the person is offering vegetarian friendly season and condiments, if you have a goal to reach maybe persons outside of Jamaica, what do you need? Is there a certain trade license that you need? Do you need to partner with supermarkets? How do you get into supermarkets? Think about that. Um, cyber secure, cyber, cyber technologies. Who are those persons? Like what it is that they're asking for? How are you going to reach them? What are they doing daily? Um, Smart Home Electrical Company Limited. There are a lot of developments that are going up. How can you partner with developers so you can be the company of choice and get into the space so persons can know that you exist and want you to offer service to them? You know, so those are some of the things that you want to do. Um, 
customer service training. Oh my God. <laughs> that is something um, that a lot, a lot, a lot of Jamaican companies need. I think in Jamaica, we've gone to a point where we feel that, you know what, you're going to get bad customer service. So you just work with it. You have an opportunity to go in the space and say to persons, listen, you, this is how you can improve. And we believe that a lot of companies don't need it. They do need it. So you get to think about how am I going to be communicating with my target market? Um, when you say this workshop is the same or similar to succession, would you say, or would you say that this workshop is similar to succession planning? You're talking about this workshop that we're having right now? Um... It, it's well. It's it's, a, it's how you put your document together. It's good to have it for succession planning. If that answers your question, because then you know where your business is going, so you're able to look at the resources that you have. You're able to look at your human capital from a people and skill and technology perspective and plan for the next step. So it will help you with that because when you're able to see where you're going and what are the things that you want to focus on then you are able to assess, you know, what do I have internally? Do I have the tools? Do I have the systems? Do I have the technology that's needed to get me to the next level? Or, you know what, I have somebody who may have come into the business as a receptionist, as an example, but I want to ensure that I have somebody who is always present to move up or if somebody is sick, you know, you name it. Um, it can help you definitely with succession planning. You need it if you're during succession planning because it's another thing that we do and i'm glad you asked that question sometimes when you're growing your business um you look at the team so no let me use and let me say it another way you have this idea to start your business you start your business you probably call a friend here call a friend there a family member there and you they come on board to help you as your business grows the needs of your business it gets to another level and sometimes we think that things aren't happening because we don't have the right skill or we don't have the right people. But when you understand where your business is going, you are able to use your plan to train for the next level. So you think about it as this is your, this is your game plan. For those who watch sports, I, I think NFL is a very good example. I know that I need to move the ball from here down. It's 100 yards, 100 yards, right? Um, how am I going to get it there? Because I know that there are going to be got, um, defenders here, you know, you name it. There, there, somebody's going to be preventing me from getting to my destination. My strategic plan is the way in which I'm going to get from zero to 100 and get there real quickly. So you think about it like that. All right. Um, cyber solution. Somebody unmuted. No, I was saying that there's a question, but I realized that you saw it. Oh, okay. So cover cybersecurity solution to is that should that, that should that have been customers? Covers the needs of clients. What would our market segment be? So what, what you would need to do, Kenton, you need to say who those clients are and what are their needs. So who are those clients and what are their needs? We are working on offering solutions to help companies to complete the compliance process for the J Jamaica Data Protection Act. Yeah. So state who your clients are. And after they have, after you have, wow, you know, this is, this is good because I, I, I was working with a company and this activity for them seems so complicated. So it would be good if you're able to illustrate how it is that you do that. But then you would need to know, answer so for your company, after you have helped companies to do that, then what? You know, is it every year? Is this one, once you do it, you don't need to do it again? Be as specific as that. So when you talk about cover the client's needs, what are you covering for who and what are those needs? And if you do it every year, something like that, those clients so they come back so they come back to you right are you guys still hearing me i just got something on my thing we're hearing you 
All right, cool. All right, so if we can move to the next. So this is just how you would do it and you have the page here, you're able to complete it on your own. The next page now talks about your financial projections. Um, and we're just adding another layer to it. So as you can see, you know, we're just building on it as we go along. Using the same makeup artist example, we would have stated makeup classes, graduation package, makeup consultation, that includes home visits, et cetera, and selling of beauty products. You are now saying, how many persons am I targeting? And what is the selling price? Some persons go, oh my God, you know, I don't want to see Excel or I don't want to do Max. You can't be a business owner. You can't be a CEO if you don't want to know your numbers. I tell everybody, Oprah said she still goes to the bank. She still makes sure that she can't check off our numbers. You need to be intimate with what's happening in your business. All right. So be very clear on the number of clients that you're targeting, your selling price, and your total revenue. So initially, maybe three, and this $300,000 was US, guys, by the way. Um, if it is that you are offering makeup classes, it may be a four week class. If you even think about, God, this is for the year. If it's a four week class and you think about how many weeks in the year, is it possible? that you are able to get 20 clients for the year. So when you break it down, it looks attainable. Is it possible <laughs> that you're able to offer five wedding or graduation package for the year and you target schools, you, you, well, universities, high schools, you, you work with photographers so that they can, you know, loop you in once they get a client, that kind of thing. Is, it, is that possible? 50 home consultations i can tell you like <laughs> when it comes on to makeup i am at one out of ten and i would really take somebody going through all of the things that i've bought and tried to fix them up like people are out there but you just need to reach them and selling up beauty products can i sell 250 for the year so this is per year you know we don't even divide this by 12 as yet so break down your goals like this so you know um what it is that you want to offer and the next sheet allows you to do that. And we're, we're coming down, we're coming down. <laughs> How much is it going to cost? We tend to look at the revenue a lot of times. And I did say earlier, for those who have, uh, um, for those who have businesses that you would have started maybe a year, maybe even five years, you're probably still getting used to what your cost is. Persons who've been in business for like 20 years still trying to get accustomed to what the cost is. Because the truth is, as you grow, you now have a different level of experience and you want to take on something else. Your business become a little bit more sophisticated. So you're now bringing on new costs. But at least at a minimum, you kind of know the things that you need to maintain the business and the things that you need to have the business growing with. So... Um, ensure that you document all the costs, no matter how minute they are, the Zoom that you have to pay for, the Canva that you have to pay for, the security guard that you have, the accounting system that you that you have. Oh, I thought we ended at 7.30. Okay, all right. Um, the accounting software that you're going to be using, ensure that you have all of those costs documented. I know budgeting on a whole can be a very emotional <laughs> experience because for the most part, a lot of persons come out in the red, but it's good to know because once you know, you are now able to say, all right, what do I need to do differently? You know, if, if this is what is costing me to keep the lights on, if this is what is costing me to show up every day, what do I now need to do differently in order to um, just offer this, this, this service to, to my clients? And once, you're, once you have documented that, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to now be able to see how much is my business really making? So you're now going to subtract your expenses from your revenue and you're like, all right, I'm, I'm breaking even. Or, oh my God, I've been going in my kitty <laughs> for the past few months 
and now I, I need to do something differently. When you know what you need, you're able to know where to go and get it. But we don't want to sit and think that everything is all dandy and everything is working on perfectly fine and it is not. So ensure that you are doing that part. No, um, I'm just checking the chat. Yes, it is. Yes, it's yes, it's the same as the annual budget. So if you have your, I, I really would prefer if you do it in Excel. And guys, whether you're using Google Worksheets or you're doing Microsoft Excel, there are budget templates out there that you can just enter your information in and it does all the calculation for you for those who don't have an accounting um, software or you don't have anybody doing it for you. Ensure that you are tracking that in Excel and <laughs> I am hoping that everybody who is on businesses are registered and you're filing your taxes. So you would need to know your numbers, guys. Ensure that you are on top of that, on top of that. All right. So yes, it's the same thing as having your annual budget. And on the last page, it's just really allowing you to just share you know having detail your plan you keep it on you keep on track your strategic document allows you to communicate the direction of your business with everybody all your stakeholders so ensure that you have that down pat no you don't need to do a strategic plan every year um once you have your 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 full game plan very clear and it's documented what you do every year is update your action plan. So if we can go back to the, the slide that has the information about the makeup artist, I'm going to show you where it is that you can, which page you need to keep going back to. And that is why it gets to be long-term. Like you can look back at it because when you, and your, your mission and your vision, those parts, those part don't, that, that doesn't change. There's another element to it that I didn't want to bring into the space because I didn't know how many years persons have been on, been in business for, but I think this is a sound place that we can start from. So you're, we can go back a little bit more to, we can keep going back. We can stay, we can stay here. This is what you get to update every year. Of course, I think you would update like what your annual target is, but each year, you come back here and you look on, okay, you would have done your review. What have I achieved? What did I plan to achieve? What's the variance, whether it's positive or negative? And then you think about where am I going in the next year? And you come here and you update your specific activities, the specific focus areas, and what you're going to be doing. Who am, am I still targeting these people? How much am I looking to generate from, from these different persons that I'm going to be serving? That answers it. Yes, Tracy Ann, um, we do have a, a link that has, Natalia just shared it again. You can just enter your information there and you will get access to three documents. The one that we're working through is the, I changed the name. <laughs> so I keep having to look back at that sheet. Your business growth planning guide, if we can just show back the, the cover page. But I do encourage that you take the time to go through. A lot of us as entrepreneurs, we're caught in being busy. We're caught, this is the one that you're going to open that we're using for this evening. Um, we're caught in being busy, overwhelmed, confusion, because we're trying to do what everybody else is doing. And we don't have a plan for our business for ourselves. And having that plan for your business helps you to just have a good picture as to where you're going and what it is that you want to achieve for your business. Um, any, any more questions? I have one more thing that I want to do. Everybody is good so far. Can I get some feedback in the chat or if you want to unmute? Any questions about any of the areas that have been shared? 
Okay, can be sent a thumbs up. All right, I just want to show, okay, as they come in, I just want to show one thing. We can, um, we can drop the presentation. So guys, when you think about your, <laughs> you're welcome, Michelle, trust me. We need, we all have clutter and sometimes we have an opportunity to clear our minds with everything that's there. Um, So I want you to think about your, your plan like this. I want to show you how having everything outlined, it in the end can give you a very good pictorial of where it is that your business is going. Probably I should come this side. All right. So if you think about you think about your goal, right? This is your overall goal for your business. Is this clear for everybody? It's clear? Yeah. Okay. So far. And yes, they're saying yes in the chat. All right. So if you think about, let me close this so I can see. All right. Think about having your goal. And this is a summary of what we went through. Your goal, and then you're thinking about what you're offering. So this is going to be my offer. And if we where if we use the makeup artist example, there were three or four or five things, but this is going to be your offer. What am I offering? Then you're going to go to, who am I offering it to? And you can, you can recreate this on your own and even have it put up in your office or on a sheet, you name it. So you're able to easily see what it is that you're doing. So this is, who am I offering it to? We talk about target markets. One of the things I say to my clients, identify what your clients are thinking, feeling, and doing. I will say that a lot because if I know what my clients are thinking, feeling, and doing at any point in time, I know where they are and what I need to be saying to them. So I'm not just saying what I feel or what I like. It's where they are. I'm going to be meeting them there. So this is now your... Your target markets, what are they thinking? Pardon the scribbling. Um, <laughs> I try. What are they thinking, feeling, and doing? And then you're going to be talking about, if you know what they're thinking, feeling, and doing, the next thing is, I probably need to, let me get this down a little bit, or back. All right. Okay, so after we have, um, we know where they, um, what they're thinking, feeling, and doing. The next thing is where, where are they? If I know where they are, the next thing that I'm documenting. So on the document that I gave you, it would have said, how am I going to reach them? Meaning the activities and the goals that you're doing. That is what you're doing here. You're answering the question of how. And when you talk about how, your how includes whether, as I said, you're going to companies, you're going to tell them that, hey, um, you need to be compliant. I'm going to help you to get there. Or you're having um, issues with the season that's, that's out there. I'm going to help you. You're getting complaints from your clients about customer service. I'm going to be offering you training. This is now the flow. So you're easily able to say, I have a goal. Your mission and your vision will be here, by the way. <laughs> um, this is what I'm offering. This is who I'm offering it to. My target market, because you're defining it a little bit more. This is where they're located, and this is how I'm going to reach them. So in the end, your full strategic document is going to provide you an outline that flows from top to bottom like this. Right? So you're not just waking up and showing up somewhere because you feel like doing it, but you would have carefully thought it through. And I'm doing this because I want to reach these people that are located here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm looking at the chat. And guys, remember this is your session.
So feel free to, oh, okay, that's all Natalia. Feel free to ask questions at any point in time. But this is really the essence of your strategic plan. We had an hour, so <laughs> we weren't able to go into everything. So I wanted to just pull out the areas that I thought would have been very helpful to get you going, at least to get your mind going. And for those who joined a little bit later, we would have shared in the link that you got the vision creation tool that you can use every year. So you're designing the vision for your life and for your business. You go ahead and you can use that tool. And for the person who showed that you have a lot of ideas in your head, I also have a brain dump work, um, workbook there, Get Organized, where you can dump all your ideas and it walks you through a few steps as to how it is that you can create that plan that works for you. So that is it from me. You can Thank let me know. Okay, I was just looking in the chat to see. <laughs> Join <laughs> Bell. Oh, so I left RGD when 2005. <laughs> so that's been a while. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So that's it from me, guys. I really do hope that you found value in everything that was shared here. Um, and ensure that you take a day or two. Large organizations take three days, four days, sometimes more months to work through the plans of the business you have an opportunity to do the same thing for your business so you don't wake up and you're just doing things all over the place ensure that you are planning because you are called to serve persons and you want to really ensure that you are putting in the work so you can serve them you know that way so thanks again guys and um over to you guys from resource center thank you so much michelle for coming that was definitely a lot of very informative information. So I'm going to encourage everyone, if you have not already downloaded the workbook, please go ahead and download it. You can work free with your team um, just to make sure that you have a very um, robust outlook at your strategic plan. If you'd like to schedule a consultation with Michelle, I have included her email address in the chat window. Michelle, I don't know if you want to give any other contact method. Um, yeah, the email is fine and you can find me on social media anywhere. Strategy with Michelle. <laughs> you can just type that in and you can find me or you can send me an email. Okay. I thank you so much, Michelle. So that is it for us tonight. If you want a consultation with Michelle, please feel free to go ahead and contact her. If you'd like to have a consultation with the SME Resource Center, you can reach us at SME Resource Center at gemmd.com and we look forward to seeing you next month remember we have these workshops every month so make sure that you check your inbox for the invitation and if you're not an existing resource center member please contact us we'll be very happy to help you join the resource center family so good night everyone good night